$25 billion. That's an absolutely insane amount of money. It also happens to be the amount of revenue generated by Harry Potter. What started out as a story written by a single mother making $100 a week turned into one of the most profitable franchises of all time, and the economics of its earnings and how bafflingly dominant it's been are worth exploring in its own video. From theme parks to novels to spin-offs to merchandise, today we're going to cover the baffling economics of Harry Potter. The origins of Harry Potter are certainly humble. Its author, J.K. Rowling, wrote the book during what is considered a rough point in her life. In late 1993, she was in an abusive marriage in Portugal. She'd written the first three chapters of what would later become Harry Potter when she had enough and decided to leave. This choice meant she was on her way to Edinburgh with her daughter, single, and needing to find a way to provide a life for her and her family. At first, things were so difficult that JK even ended up on government assistance, but it didn't kill her dream of becoming an author. She continued to work on the book while building up a side career of her own as a teacher, and for some years spent time doing both writing and educating. Despite becoming a massive powerhouse of a franchise today, at the time the first novel was published in 1990, it didn't have a great reception. Before the initial sequel to The Sorcerer's Stone, that only sold 5,650 copies of the book. That is much higher than none, but the royalties only amounted to $4,200, which was not enough for JK to stop teaching. Either way, becoming a published author who can sell thousands of copies is impressive, but that really kicked into insane overdrive with the US publication by Scholastic Books and the release of its sequel, Chamber of Secrets. Scholastic purchased the rights to publish the books in America for $105,000 in September of 1998. Soon after, it started to gain traction. This is the first avenue we're going to discuss regarding the economics as well, which is just how profitable and huge the book sales really are for Harry Potter. As the series began to take the world by storm, JK's royalties began to increase, but the dominance it had over the kids' book category needs to be addressed. There were some years where Harry Potter alone approached almost a quarter of the volume of all children's books sold. Its popularity was so immense that 31% of all Americans had at least attempted to read one book of the series. The series overall has sold over 500 million copies by this point, most of which being hardcover novels which carry higher profit margins. The book, to this very day, over 20 years after its initial release, is still managing to sell tens of millions of copies every year. But that doesn't even come close to another huge economic engine for the franchise, which is the movie series. In 1999, Warner Brothers decided to buy the film rights to Harry Potter for a few million dollars. This didn't come with no caveats, however. J.K. Rowling maintained final say over the final script, and had some control over merchandising as well. But either way, it was official that the book series was headed to the large screen. The films became cultural icons, with the highest grossing film generating over $1.3 billion at the box office alone. All in all, the movies have made $7.7 .7 billion in revenue, and while the last official movie premiered in the year 2010, it hasn't stopped Warner Brothers or JK from attempting to recreate the magic with spin-off series as well. In 2013, they announced a second film series centering around a pre Equal to Harry Potter 70 years before the main story begins. The series is called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. While the secondary series has not been the commercial success of the original films, they have been profitable. While these stories were also originally written as a screenplay, they were also turned into novels to be monetized in multiple avenues. These two avenues alone would be enough to place Harry Potter into the realm of most profitable media franchises of all time. But it isn't where the economics end. Beyond just the novels and films has been an entire merchandising line, with die-hard fans that'll buy just about anything with Harry Potter attached to it. If you can think of almost any object in existence, there's a pretty good chance that someone or some company has managed to turn it into merchandise and sell it to Harry Potter fans. While some pieces of Harry Potter memorabilia will probably leave you scratching your head, most of it is pretty commonplace products 
they can charge a premium for by saying it's a Slytherin potholder instead of a normal one. Hoodies, shirts, pencils, notebooks, food, basically anything you can think of ever being tied into a brand has been done to make this franchise money. Think about the amount of Harry Potter backpacks that have been sold over the years, as it is one of the most popular franchises of all time. Selling Harry Potter merchandise is so lucrative, in fact, that entire theme park lands have popped up centered around the world as well. In Universal Studios Orlando, California, Japan, and soon Beijing, you can find yourself in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, which are entire theme park lands dedicated to making the customer feel like they are actually in the wizarding world. The world does have insane attention to detail and is incredibly immersive. However, it's not like they built it not to make a profit. The entire world is incredibly immersive, yes, but by taking this super nostalgic brand for people and giving them a once-in-a-lifetime experience, they're making a killing. For example, in both Wizarding Worlds, fans can line up and wait for the chance to get their very own wand from Harry Potter. How much is this magic wand? For the 2022 Collector's Edition, just $75. That's right, you can wait in line for the chance to purchase your very own non-magic stick for $75 too. In literally any other environment, people would laugh at that offer. But in the Wizarding World, many people take the attitude of, well, I'm in Harry Potter world, or well, it's a souvenir to remember this by. They provide an incredible experience to fans of the series, and in exchange, they spend hundreds of dollars on Harry Potter merchandise they wouldn't buy anywhere else. The parks themselves do have great rides and attractions, but at the end of the day, no one's going to spend tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars designing a theme park if it isn't going to end up lining their own pockets eventually. Some of the prices they managed to charge for Harry Potter memorabilia at the park and beyond is truthfully shocking. $85 for a Hogwarts Express blanket, $52 for a Hogwarts crest. It's unbelievable what people will spend on this franchise. The level of diehard fans has quite a bit to do with this. If you're around the age of 17 to 25 years old, chances are you know at least one person who ended up with a Harry Potter tattoo. While we at Aged Milk are not large enough fans of the series to get it permanently put onto our bodies, a lot of fans are. People who are willing to get your novel permanently put onto their bodies are probably also the type of fans that would be willing to shell out the big bucks for the franchise that meant so much to them through their childhood and young adulthood. Nostalgia is one of the most powerful marketing tools at any brand's disposal, and Harry Potter's packed full of it. A lot of diehard Potterheads have some of their fondest memories associated with the series, or give the series credit for helping them through a rough situation. This is powerful for the people who had this experience, and we don't want to discredit it at all. It's just also those people with a deep personal connection to the series that are willing to spend more on it as well. I am not of the persuasion to spend $63 on a wand from Harry Potter, but if it was, my my all-time favorite franchise of all time, and I felt like I owed it a piece of my childhood, maybe it would be a different story. People are willing to spend what some would consider an irrational amount of money on this franchise because of how much nostalgia it really holds for them. Looking to the future, beyond even just the avenues of income we've already spoken about, is another potential avenue for earnings as well, gaming. You see, Harry Potter has already spawned eight video games, some being the generic movie games, but some were the memorable Lego games focusing on the series. Those were able to find commercial success, but they released a new game called Hogwarts Legacy in early 2023. The game hasn't had a chance to really get a reception behind it yet, but it has people excited, certainly, with huge amounts of positive comments on pre-release teaser gameplay. With proper support, Hogwarts Legacy could take the love people already have of the franchise and turn it into a passionate player base that will support the game with microtransactions until the end of time. You think $62 ones are bad, just wait until it costs 1,500 Hogwarts points to change your house in-game, and you can only buy them in $100 packs. Jokes aside, it is yet another avenue for them to profit off of the IP they already own the rights to. 
All in all, Harry Potter is an absolute economic giant. With over $25 billion in lifetime revenue, it ranks as one of the top 10 most profitable media franchises of all time. It's versatile, with its income being strongly diversified. And while its heyday may be behind in terms of new releases, it still has a massive fan base with tons of nostalgia, which will continue to provide a massive profit for years and probably decades to come. It transformed the media industry and will probably go down as one of the most influential media franchises of all time.